Thursday's edition of Afternoon Express from Zanzi. I'm Balisa Dembe and today we're diving into how you can host a beautiful and safe lockdown wedding. We meet Robin Roberts, founder of Robin Roberts Studio for Boutique Bridal Fashion, who will share her journey of operating for 25 years. We'll also be hosting an important dialogue on debunking skin myths and kicking it off is the creative director of SA Weddings, Beatha Desai, who will explain how couples are going forward with their weddings during lockdown. And on the social media platforms, we want to find out from you. We all know our skincare tips and tricks. I mean, some of them might have been learned from our family and perhaps some may be found online. So tell us, what's your secret? Ladies in the kitchen, are you glowing today? <laughs> yes, I don't know if we're glowing, but we're so excited about this next segment about weddings. My wedding was very small, mm. 20 people. I wish I could, if I wanted to get married, I could have 20 people because with a uh, black culture, you invite the whole neighborhood, <laughs> otherwise no one ever speaks yeah. to you again. But we're making a handbag today to go with it, a bread handbag to go to the wedding. You're for real, right? Yeah. So you can do the eat top your... <laughs> and we're gonna get married. Well, to get that <laughs> recipe, guys, make sure you go to afternoonexpress.co.za. But for now, let's uh, catch up with Pieta. We chat to Beatha Desai from SA Weddings about planning and having your wedding in a pandemic and how to make it still feel special. Beatha, welcome to the show. Oh, thank you so much. Really happy to be here. Now, girl, with the lockdown and the pandemic, so many couples have either had to cancel their weddings or postpone it, and others have just tied the knot despite restrictions. So please, may you just give us a rundown of what the restrictions are and the protocols that are put in place that we have to, like, you know, abide to when we have our weddings now. So I think the really important thing to remember is that love is not cancelled and you can still most definitely have the wedding of your dreams. There's just an extra step in your planning that you now need to include to ensure the safety of all your guests. Um, the regulations state that there's a maximum of 50 attendees and all strict hygienic protocols and physical distancing measures must be adhered to. If you are opting to go um, or get married at an actual venue, then your venue owner or manager also just needs to ensure that the correct safety protocols are put into place before the function is held. So in short, it's things like screening stations to screen all your guests and do temperature checks, not allowing access to any guests without a face mask and to really, you know, emphasize that the guests have to wear a face mask throughout the duration of the event, except when they are eating or drinking. Now, Beatha, with 50 guests, I have to find out who's included. Is it just friends, family, or are staff also within the mix? Yes, it is a maximum of 50 attendees, and that is um, all your service staff, your bar staff. It excludes your kitchen staff, so it's basically the bridal couple, all the guests, and any contributing service providers like a videographer or a, pho a photographer, uh, your bar staff, your service staff. How then do we go about quite tactfully maneuvering who to invite and who not to? Do we just be honest and give a blanket statement, or do we now in invite Zoom calls? The most important thing to remember is that your wedding is a celebration of your love and it's a celebration of your union. And unfortunately, with the restrictions, you do have to be quite intentional about who you do have present at the actual event if you decide to go that route. But technology is so amazing. So if you can't invite all your aunties and all your uncles and friends, Zoom and amazing like online platforms have made it so easy for your guests to tune in. And you can still make it ultra personal by, you know, including them in the toast, asking them to maybe make your signature drink at home so that they are still feeling part of the ceremony or the event, but might not necessarily be there in person. What do you recommend couples do to still enjoy their wedding day and not postpone it? In our books, it's always the right time to say I do. And if you are a couple that is considering getting married in 2020, just remember that you will go down in history. You'll have an epic story to tell your kids one day. And at the end of the day, whether it's got 50 people or 150 people, your day is your day and it's going to be really amazing. So as an office, we had this discussion. We thought, you know, what advice would we give brides and grooms to be? And our first major point is that you just have to embrace it. Unfortunately, we are in extraordinary times right now. This is 
the new normal. So the best thing for you to do before you even start planning is just to understand that there are certain limitations and there are amazing creative ways to work around it. There's nothing more beautiful than, and special than actually spending the best day of your life with your nearest and dearest in a deeply personal setting. And small can still be fabulous when you pair up with the right service providers. They will easily translate your wedding vision into a petite chic celebration. Do your research with your service providers. If you were a bride that had to postpone, so you might just consider sticking with your original service providers. You might go a completely different route or you might do a combination of both. But I think pay up with service providers in the industry that best suit your vision and you, you will with them create magic. Um, if it is in your budget, book a reliable COVID safety team. These um, teams are there to basically ensure that all the hygiene protocols and physical distancing measures are implemented and you as a bridal couple can step back knowing that someone else is taking care of that. Encourage social distancing in a cool way. So you can do amazing things like customized face masks, maybe with your wedding monogram and your date. Um, you can introduce a new system called the COVID um, safety bands. Um, these interesting ways you can um, look at your seating arrangements wow. it's all about just embracing it and looking at it from a, a design perspective but also from a safety perspective yeah. and then as a bridal couple with a with, with a lower guest count, you may have a little bit more of your budget um, left over. So splurge wisely. So look at cool things like a stocked bar, look at providing interesting and amazing wedding favors. It seems like the opportunities are endless here and something that people can truly be creative and have fun with. I mean, thank you for giving your main tips to bridal parties out there and everyone will, willing yeah. to say I do during this time. We truly appreciate it. Goodbye. Bye. Goodbye. <laughs> Having a wedding in a pandemic can be challenging, but there's no need to not have your special day without your family and friends. For more wedding planning and inspiration, follow SA Weddings. Hey, my only tip is don't invite the whole family. But um, I want to know, Polly, when are the two of you going to get married? Going Go to, to, to the, the chapel, chapel and we're going to get married. <laughs> Go, okay, don't get me started. You know, I'm very much looking forward to my big day. But what I love about this conversation is that we are keeping our pockets intact. We're making sure that we don't overspend here and that we're economical. That's what I was thinking of. If, I was, if there was ever a time to get married, it would be now during lockdown when there's the fewest people ever <laughs> oh. so that I can invite like five people and that's it. What's his name? Um, 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 please listen to what, Pal <laughs> what Tumi is saying. If she can get married now. <laughs> wow. Did I just walk into a surprise proposal? Okay, South Africa, head over to our social media platforms. Let us know, are you enjoying any love in lockdown? Have you attended any lockdown weddings? Or of course, those Zoom weddings, mm. loving all of that. Use that hashtag Afternoon Express in all of your comments. Now, ladies, we all all want perfect skin and we're all bound to take tips from wherever we can get them whether it's a celebrity or our closest relative coming up we're debunking some common and harmful myths around skin care
Social media can be fun, light-hearted, and in the current reality, a way for all of us to connect with our friends and family who we may not be able to see in person. But there can also be a dark side where everyday people and personalities get attacked or shamed because they don't meet someone else's standards. Why is this emotional roller coaster resulting in a generation of low self-esteem individuals with many of us measuring our self-worth by the number of likes and comments? Joining us this afternoon is a formidable group of females. Please welcome Oyama Botha, Davina May Gordon, and Zuleika Patel, who will be unpacking this week's Ingram Skin Session on the relationship between social media and self-confidence. Welcome to The Loft, ladies. Hi. Thank you so much hey. for having us. For having us. Now, ladies, I just want to start at the beginning of this entire conversation by finding out how has social media affected your self-confidence and why? Zuleika? Well, for me, there's been a bright side and there's also been a downfall to it. Well, the bright side is it's assisted me to connect with, with other young women who go through the same things I've been through, who have felt the same feelings I've previously felt and still feel and also connect with other young people who are aligned with the same purpose as myself and then there's the downside where um, when you don't fit the beauty standard the beauty standard and not the eurocentric beauty standard but the typical beauty standard which they um, put out there that this is how a black woman should look or this is how a woman of color should look your skin should constantly be oiled you need to have perky breasts and a small waist and widened hips and when you don't fit that then you're made to feel like you are less than and you are not worthy. And um, what's assisted me with not feeling that is just understanding that I'm unique in who I am and also practicing self-love and self-care every single day. Wow. Very positive words coming out of something that could have steered us in a very negative direction. I mean, Davina, do these words resonate with you? How has social media affected your self-confidence and why? Oh, absolutely. Um, I, I feel like uh, Zuleika hit the nail on the head there. You know, we, we live in a world where we're constantly comparing ourselves to what we see on social media. And it can be quite a toxic space to be in mentally, you know, because you look at what you're lacking you know, in terms of your look or your career, or what you put out into the world. Um, so it's, it's a very, very, very difficult place to be in. Um, especially where I come from, you know, I'm a musician, I, I entertain. So I've, I've constantly had um, insecurities, which I still deal with today. Um, and it's, it's, a, it's a matter of changing your mindset and focusing on why you're doing what you're doing rather than what people might think yeah. why you're doing it. So it's, it's all about your mindset and, and how you set that. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, Oyama, the ladies here have opened up the discussion with very poignant points. I completely agree with them. And for me, what's been the most important thing to do is to then focus on the positives because there's a whole lot of negativity that goes around in the world and on social media. So when I go into a space and I channel myself in that space, I want to surround myself with positive things and positive people. So I'm very wary of who I follow, um, what trends do I follow, um, as well as who I engage with. So things um, of that magnitude are very important in how you see yourself, how you play out in the environment, especially when it comes to loving yourself and identifying, especially if you're not in the normative yardstick of what beauty is. Mm. So, okay, ladies, it seems like there is a, just a unanimous idea here that there is a positive and a negative when it comes to social media. So then, Oyama, let's continue with this conversation. How has this affected then your mental well-being? How do we prevent social media from negatively affecting our own self-esteem and resist the pressures that come with being connected 24-7? I always say that you need to go into uh, social media with the mindset that everyone is curating their content based on what they want you to see. It's not reality as it is. So it's only part of what you're seeing in somebody's life. So you can't think that you need to be comparing yourself, feeling like they're ahead of you. Get rid of those thoughts. First things first, get rid of the, the thoughts that uh, somebody's moving ahead of you based on what you're seeing that they're posting, right? Mm -hmm. and Secondly, if what posting triggers you, 
is mute the account if it's your it can be your family, your friend, mute their account. You don't have to unfollow them. If you mute them, you won't see any of their posts, right? Like keep it moving, keep it flowing and mute, block and and just be jolly. Honestly, like you get your own content on social media. You get to decide. You have the power to decide what you consume. So use that. Absolutely. It's all about keeping it cute on social media. But Zuleka, I mean, the body positive movement is to change the perception, realizing that all bodies are equally valuable and worthy of self-love and acceptance. What does self and body positivity mean to you? It's a constant revolution that you wage within yourself internally and you commit to every single day. It's not like a once-off thing whereby today you're confident and today's confident will carry you out every single day. It's something that you work on every single day. Learn about yourself. Discover who you are and um, also just appreciate each and every single inch of your being. Yeah, wow. It's so true. I mean, Davina, as a musician then, how do you think brands in South Africa can become more inclusive and body positive? You know, unfortunately, it, it seems that the the narrative fueling so-called convention, conventional beauty uh, norms and, and who has the biggest social currency is the loudest and, and, and most powerful. So it, it's, it's almost like the same people get asked to do uh, or get invited to do the same campaigns, that, but that, that campaign doesn't necessarily fit their brand or what they stand for. You know, they, they want to see that instant gratification based on, you know, the following. And so there's that side of it. But then there's also the side where, you know, st stereotypes are being pushed too much. You know, I mean, I would like to see more people of color doing something other than dancing for airtime and the like. Um, you know, I, I feel like they can feature more in the space where, okay, maybe they're playing an instrument, you know, mm -hmm. something that is out of the ordinary, ordinary of what you would see on TV or in campaigns. Absolutely. So it's, it's, again, changing that mindset, you know, and it, and I think we're going to have to make a bigger noise about it if we're going to see any change. Ladies, on this note, then, I have to then ask, with Ingram's strong positioning around owning and being brave in your skin, what is your message to those watching? I think for me, what's very important is, um, as Uzalaka said earlier about body positivity, just being seen uh, in a positive light by yourself, but more importantly, by other people. So the fact that there are brands like Ingrams who can embrace um, such um, movements like body positivity is absolutely amazing because then the young person who's currently watching at home right now can see that, you know what? I can get there. Like, yes, I'm a big girl or I don't fit into the normative yardstick of what beauty is, but they're on TV. They deserve to be on TV because body positivity means everyone should be seen in a positive light, regardless of their size, their weight, uh, whether they're able or not able. So I'm absolutely um, excited to be part of such a, a wonderful moment with programs. And... Uh, Personally, my favorite product would have to be the original um, herbal green one. Yeah. I always say that it reminds me so much of home because mm. uh, my parents used it from like a very young age. So just smelling it is absolutely amazing. But beyond that, the fact that it gives you moisture for days is absolutely amazing. Absolutely. And you two ladies, just quickly round it up for me. How does this feel being a part of the Ingrams campaign? Um, for me, it feels absolutely amazing that there are brands such as Ingrams opening up the doors to women who have been made to feel like they aren't worthy. They aren't worthy of um, being associated with um, brand, skincare brands because they don't fit the typical standard of what, of what um, should be next to a skincare brand. And also just um, also having a diversity of voices, you know, in such campaigns and really going deeper into the genuine conversations yeah. around how we feel about ourselves, you know. And so really, I think it's absolutely amazing. And loving yourself is the most 
it's the bravest thing that you can do because it is going to be hard on on certain days it will be very hard but um it's really it's 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 the best love that you can get like mm-hmm. you won't get this kind of love anywhere else you know and then just to wrap up my favorite um my favorite um ingram's ingram's product like the top tier product has to be this um this top because um so growing up i used the dark green one and then i got to a age whereby i didn't want to smell like the the traditional um smell of ingrams and then this one with aloe has such a nice fresh scent to it and i just really like anything with aloe in it mm-hmm. and the moisture the moisture is top tier and uh, Davina, you know, in closing, how are we going to wrap up this chat? <laughs> I mean, it's it's been so wonderful to be a part of this discussion. And I think it's a discussion that we don't have enough, you know, because social media can be a very lonely place for those who don't feel like they belong or they don't have a community, you know, where they feel invited and, you know, invited, but with like-minded people. So um, thank you to Ingrams for starting this conversation and for opening the door for women, you know, all shapes and sizes. It's It's been such a special, um, you know, event wow. to be a part of. And I'd, I'd like to say that the because of my Joburg winters that I struggle with so much and how dry my skin can be, the tissue oil lotion has really done wonders for my skin and, and it's been a great treat to use I love during that. the winter. Oh, ladies, thank you so much for joining me. I mean, Davina Homegirl, that also is my favorite, but I might as well just smell some Ingrams here myself <laughs> and get some of that moisture. Thank you for joining me. Goodbye. Thanks for having us. <laughs> Next time you log on to your social media account, remember the videos and images you see are what people want to portray. Don't compare your reality to those around you. The real acceptance you seek is within yourself and in the real human connections we make. I found this beautiful message from Oprah that I really found resonates with me. I finally realized that being grateful to my body was key to giving more love to myself. You only have one skin. Nourish it and wear it bravely.
sneezing, runny nose, and itching of the nose and throat are all symptoms of allergic rhinitis. With spring officially here, allergic reactions will be on the rise, which is why we need to be on our best defense. Allergex non-drowsy is indicated for the relief of allergic reactions and discomfort. We chat to therapeutic area lead at Adcock Ingram OTC, Catherine Makomsha, on how Allergex non-drowsy may be your best defense this spring. Catherine, welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Now, Catherine, what is Allergex non-drowsy? All right, so Allergex non-drowsy is classified as an antihistamine, meaning that if you're experiencing allergic reactions, which can present in form of a runny nose, itchy eyes, or um, watery eyes, for some people, the allergic reaction shows in their skin in form of a rash. So you need something like Allergex non-drowsy, which is going to manage all of those symptoms. What allergies does it specifically help with? And what are the symptoms that it can assist in relieving? Okay, so we're talking about um, allergies when you be triggered by pollen, for example. We're going into spring season and we know that a lot of people are going to be reacting to the pollen. But that's not all. Some people are allergic to their own pets, you know, pet dander and so on. Or it could be indoor stuff that you find in your bed that you react to. So that's what the allergy medication is indicated for. But then the question is now then, the non-drowsy term, what does it mean? And then why is it so important? When you think of um, medication or something like a car, for example, there's always new um, generation of molecules or a new model that comes in. The older anti-allergy medication used to make you sleep. Allergics non-drowsy has an active ingredient called loratadine, meaning it's a second-generation molecule. It's not going to cause you to sleep when you take it. Why do we need that? During the day, we have bills to pay, so we go to work, we need to work. You can't be falling asleep on your job. So you take allergics non-drowsy, you manage those symptoms, and you carry on with your work. You can't lock the children down forever in the house. They want to go play outside, and pollen is going to be out there. You give them allergics non-drowsy syrup, and they're exhausted. I have to find out then, is the Allergex non-drowsy only for spring allergies or can it be used all year round? Now remember that we talk spring because that's where the pollen is at its peak. But allergies happen throughout the whole year. Mm. Imagine you at a restaurant, you take, uh, you eat something with peanuts. That could be winter, that could be any time of the year. You will need some anti-allergy medication. Mm. So allergies can happen at any time. And then can the whole family use it? Of course, of course. You know, adults are comfortable swallowing a tablet or a pill, but with babies, you know, children are very fussy. Two years and above, they'll rather have a syrup, and that syrup must also taste good. Okay, that's good to know that this is safe and cleared for the entire family. Catherine, thank you so much for joining us, and thank you for breaking down Allergex non-drowsy. Goodbye. Thank you for having me. Thank you for having Allergex non-drowsy. In light of spring week and allergy season, Allergex Non-Drowsy is giving away 2,000 Rand cash to five lucky winners. All you have to do is reply to the competition post on the Afternoon Express Facebook page and Twitter page and tell us what triggers your allergies. Don't forget to use the hashtag live and play allergy free. Competition closes on the 4th of September 2020 at midnight and terms and conditions can be found on afternoonexpress.co.za. Free to be you. Live, work, play, sleep, allergy free with Allergex non drowsy. I'm lucky that I don't have seasonal allergies, mm. but I do have an allergy for a disinfectant, and then I drink my Allergex normally, and then I went to go to sleep, but not now anymore. And with kids? Yeah, I love the fact that it's non drowsy, so mm. my son can actually take it as well, which is good for the little ones. Balisa, I know you don't have any little ones, but at least should you have one, you know that the Allergex non drowsy would be perfect. Absolutely, and it's so safe for people like me who love babysitting. I always <laughs> take on that responsibility just to let the parents be humans and enjoy their lives. Mm. Now it's time for everyone in the family to enjoy their lives. Whether it's spring, winter, summer, mm. autumn, it's, it's for everyone. Olaf. Olaf. Hey, plus it's waiting season now. Hey? <laughs> and a lot of 
our table will be enjoying the great outdoors it being wedding season. Yeah. And on that note, ladies, you know, the COVID-19 lockdown has brought most businesses to a virtual standstill, which even for a bridal boutique that has been in business for 25 years, it's a very hard knock. Coming up, fashion designer Robin Roberts shares her story. COVID-19 and the nationwide lockdown has seen the postponements and cancellations of nearly all planned weddings in our country and across the globe. However, as we adapt to our new living conditions, there is a springtime trend of weddings that is starting to take place. And joining us now on the show is fashion designer Robin Roberts, who is celebrating 25 years in the industry. Robin, welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you for this opportunity. Firstly, Robin, a huge congratulations from us here on Afternoon Express on celebrating your 25th, or should I say, your silver anniversary of your amazing company. Now, what does reaching this milestone and achievement mean to you and your team? So, it's been such a rewarding journey, and my team and myself, we just love what we do. We built this business from a zero base, and... Uh, yeah, we just delighted to be here and look forward to the next 25 years. Now I just want to speak a little bit more about you and your journey. How did the Robin Roberts Bridal Wear come into place as a brand? So, Palesa, I loved fashion as a teen. So my mum taught me to sew. I was influenced by my grandmothers as well and uh, met my husband when I was quite young. Uh, I studied fashion. I worked in the industry, but very soon after we got married, he realized that I needed to go on my own. So as I said before, with a zero base, rent to pay, 
we took the plunge and myself and one seamstress worked for a few clients, mm. but very quickly realized that wedding dresses were my passion with friends getting married. And so slowly we built it. And uh, 10 years later, my husband joined because we wanted to grow it more. And today we have 12 staff as well as my co-designer who's been with me nearly 15 years. How has COVID-19 and the nationwide lockdown impacted your brand? And in which ways did your friendly connections with the UK and the US help? Yes, so I'm very grateful for Instagram and Facebook because, gosh, there's a whole world of, of faces out there and many of whose wedding dresses I've made. And I think uh, just from posting masks to a couple of influential people, the business grew very quickly and my daughter opened up an online store for us and we our masks have gone all over as well as our loungewear for, for Stroke Honeymoon Anniversary. It's worked very well during COVID with more people working from home. But from the 1st of June, weddings are back, uh, even lockdown weddings. So we're back into the wedding dresses. But we're, but we're very grateful to be able to work during that, that lockdown, yeah. that strict lockdown time. It seems like it's all about creativity and flexibility, but the spread of COVID-19 and the resulting nationwide lockdown has hit the economy hard. So what advice would you give to brides looking for affordable bridal couture during the springtime and the summertime? This time of less deadlines has also given, uh, has stretched my creativity and I've actually really enjoyed it. The cash flow hasn't been that great, but we've designed a range of minimalist wedding dresses at half the price and uh, you know brides are getting married in their back gardens or in court now and, uh, and and many are eloping which is also perfect for a more casual white special dress that can perhaps be worn again let's talk a little bit more about the bridesmaids dresses and another addition which has become a distant part of the bridal party is of course the mother of the bride and the mother of the groom so what should these beautiful south african brides to be keep in mind when deciding on these dresses? I think the word would be understated for a mother and a bridesmaid because it is all about the bride. And with our minimalist range and me being a true minimalist and enjoying just style at its best with a uh, a more classy feel with not overdoing anything, I think that it's very important that the retinue remains understated and elegant uh, and definitely in the right colour for the right person and style. So our garments are beautifully cut in the right colour and that's our recipe for success. Thank you so much for joining us and giving us all these incredible ideas. We appreciate it. Goodbye. Thank you. To all our beautiful engaged couples out there who've had to postpone or even cancel their wedding dreams for now, just remember that the cost of a wedding and a wedding dress doesn't have to be over the top and expensive. You've heard it here from the bridal guru herself, Robin Roberts. Minimalism is the key trend for beautiful springtime or summertime weddings, but also for your pockets. <laughs> If there's one thing I love about businesses like this is the fact that Robin's family, or rather business, started from a passion that she had. Mm. It was always in her and she was like, you know what, let me just do what I love and now it's making her money. And I think it's, that is well, during a difficult time like COVID now, that's how you survive is mm. when you've got that passion yeah. that wants to let you keep you going and going and going and never give up. Yeah, Pallas, I, I now actually did ask this question, but I didn't hear your answer. When are you getting married? <laughs> when I was when Jesus fight. says, yes, <laughs> Nobody can say when Jesus says yes, guys. Stop put pressure on. Stop putting pressure on me. And in fact, I want to. I want to turn this whole conversation around, and I want to put pressure on you guys in the kitchen. Mm. So, what are we going to be whipping up shortly? We're going to be whipping up shortly a handbag to take to the chapel, mm. and we okay. gone. So it is a bread handbag. That's a beautiful dish from Lebanon that mm. we're going to make, and we're going to fill it with cream cheese. That sounds absolutely mm. delicious, South Africa. If you want to get all of the ingredients and the details to making this recipe, please head over to our Afternoon Express website, afternoonexpress.co.za, and you could be making that cute little handbag after these.
nothing beats the long-lasting freshness and quality taste of Clover Fresh Milk. Made with love by Clover. It's your chance to get rewarded with points and so much more when you buy Tiger Brands products and stand a chance to win incredible weekly prizes when you sign up to Buy Smart. Buy Smart is a loyalty and rewards platform that those purchasing Tiger Brands products can engage with, whether you're at home, in store, or on the move. It's seamless, it's simple, and it all happens on WhatsApp. You can earn points for qualifying purchases on products like Jungle Oats, Koo, Albany and more. This is how you can sign up easily. Send hi on WhatsApp to 072-897-6278 and follow the steps. Browse by smart promos and products. Upload your till slip when you've purchased qualifying products. Receive points for your purchases and then use your points to unlock rewards like airtime, data and shopping vouchers. It's quick and easy and you can sign up on the go. This month you will stand a chance to win weekly prizes when you sign up. A queen size bed, a fridge, a washing machine, and a smartphone up for grabs. T's and C's apply. Sign up today to stand a chance of going into the draw for our first weekly prize next Thursday. It could be your lucky day. Get rewarded for your shopping choices with Buy Smart. Send hi on WhatsApp to 072-897-6278 and follow the steps. You will stand a chance of winning incredible prizes. Welcome back, South Africa. Welcome back. It's Thirsty Thursdays. Almost, we're almost there. Yeah, we're almost there. <laughs> One sleep. It's quarter to the weekend, and we've got a delicious recipe to freshen up your Thursday. Our fresh milk handbag bread with a delicious cream cheese filling is an easy to make recipe for a light dinner or for that savory treat. And no, it's not meant to be placed in your handbag. I know, but doesn't it, isn't it beautiful? Um, I'm already thinking of things I can put in there. I know. And then it's just like a handbag. It's like, I'm going da -da 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 chapel and I'm going know, to get right? married with my handbag. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but you know what? There was this horrible uh, bomb that exploded in Lebanon a few weeks ago mm. in the harbour. And I was reading about the food then and then I came across this beautiful bread that they sell on the street in Lebanon. Okay. So um, this is, and then they hang it on a wooden um, ah. stick and then they serve it with za'atar inside or cream mm. cheese inside. And that's why I decided to make it today. Interesting. Okay, yeah. please take us through it. Yes, yeah, so first it's a bread dough. So it's a very simple bread dough. We're first going to mix, um, we eat some milk, some of our clover fresh milk. In the blue bottle. In the blue bottle <laughs> and this easy pour handle. I love that because at least now it means I can actually send my son to go fetch it and pour it for <laughs> Yeah, you, you can just uh, go and buy the blue bottle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's so easy to find. And you can just, it literally pops out at you. I'm going to warm that up just to lukewarm water, okay. not too hot. I'm going to add some yeast because we need the yeast to activate. Okay. And then the food for the yeast is the sugar. We know that. Let me just loosen it up. And we're just going to leave that for a few seconds. I'm just going to give it a quick stir and I'm actually going to put it down now again because it's nearly tippet already. Okay. I know that. And then you just leave it somewhere to throth for about 20, okay. 10 minutes to, to foam, up, to foam up. And then I'm going to mix it in my dough but you are making a filling for yes. us. So the filling, as per your instruction madam, <laughs> we've got some cream cheese over here, we've got some basil and some Italian parsley. We've also got some garlic as yes. well as some bacon that we've fried up, crisped, crisped it up, and then just chopped it nicely together. So I'm basically going to put all of this together. One thing I did do is we left our cream cheese out to be, to soften up a bit, but I would like just a little bit. A little bit of this milk, just to Correct. loosen it up, hey. Because you can't really go wrong with, yeah, yeah. with clover milk. I mean, it's been it's been around for years, you know, and that basically means that it's a quality product that you can trust. Yeah. I used to eat, have it when I was a kid. I'm still having clover today, so it's basically, it's withstood the test of time. Yeah. So I'm just and it's delicious. You can buy cream cheese mm -hmm. with that's already got the flavourings in, but I always prefer to put my own fresh herbs yeah, in. Yeah, because you always just put another twist to it. So this has been thrust up, not completely. You still have to wait. And then we're just going to add this to our flour. Mm -hmm. And we're going to mix it through properly. And you're going to knead it for 10 minutes. And okay. I don't have the time to do that now. <laughs> you knead it for 10 minutes. 
and then you let it stand and rise for the first rise to double in size. When you've done that, you come back, you knead it down again, mm -hmm. and you let it rise again, double in size. But voila, we've got that whole process here. So the dough is finished. And this is a beautiful, elastic dough. Look at that. The gluten has been developed. It's just a beautiful dough. I have a trick up my sleeve, but we're gonna first watch how you're gonna do it. Yes. I'm also gonna ask for a little bit of flour from you as well. Okay. So and then... first, I'm gonna, you, you normally, the, the amount of dough that we've got on the website, and peeps, if you want the recipe, go to afternoonexpress.co.za. You, you divide it in four. Yes. So I've okay. got, I'm just gonna do one here. Oh, and I've got my favorite heavy, heavy rolling pin. So what you do is you just roll it out and you try and get like a teardrop shape. Okay. Let me just do that. So it takes a bit of time. Yes, it's so beautifully elastic. Like so it basically just follows you everywhere. When you go up, it goes up with you. Yo, this rolling pill is amazing. You know, I've got a wooden one in a home and I think I need to invest in this, this heavy marble one. So... Just try and get it in a shape like that. Okay. And I had a glass here. What happened to the glass? But I'm just going to use this now. Okay. Any round thing, just make the hole to form that part in there. Okay, like that, like so. Okay. And there it is, like that, South Africa. There's your handbag. And I'm going to put this handbag now on there. <laughs> and then I'm going to brush it with a bit of, oh yeah, I need to add a bit of milk in here. Yeah, you can just use milk or you can use a bit of egg for some okay. extra shine. Gonna add this, quickly gonna brush this. I love working with dough. Bread is such a wonderful thing to do with family yeah. and it's so satisfactory, you know, to do and it smells so nice. Nothing beats home-baked bread. Like I, I get this, there's all these other brands, but home-baked bread just has that inviting smell. It's just, yeah. It's amazing. And then I'm going to add some sesame seed and bake that, guys. Look at this. You bake, oh, you bake this in the oven for only about 10 minutes, 10, 12 minutes at 180 degrees. Mm. And that's it. Awesome. You've got the one tip and the yeah. one way of doing it. And I went and found out that there's another way to do it. So you can basically just take the actual dough that you've got and roll out the ends so that the ends are thinner than the center. So this becomes the bag part. And then this... Okay, so that will become the handbag, the, yes. the, the strap part. See, these are the straps. <laughs> Be careful, this is how the camera this is going to make sure it. you buy a quality bag because it won't snap. <laughs> And then you just basically keep rolling it out and leave the center hole. And then you combine these okay. two. Tombs. And then you can just press it down so that the, the one side is thicker, the one side is basically... You see, the children will love playing <laughs> around with that. But Tombs, can I have some of that cream cheese? Sure, for... definitely. And basically goes on, bakes exactly the same as yours, 190 degrees. And that is it. So then everybody gets like a little handbag. And then you just cut it open like this. These so are like perfect party favors after you've had know. people. <laughs> just stuff everything. Make, in with there. a glass of wine for me always. You know, right? And can you imagine you've, you've got this on the, you've got a handbag for everyone. I'm going to grab the knife here. I'm going to add this beautiful cheese that you've made. And you know what, Tomb is what I've kept on um, this week? We made that beautiful uh, mince, mm. that Turkish mince. So I've got some left here. And just to be naughty, I'm going to add a bit here at the top for a surprise for somebody. Mm. So people never throw away your mints or anything that you've got in the in your in, in your okay, fridge. Yeah. You know, just keep it for days like this. We're going to add some mints in here and a bit of more mints. And I've chopped some fresh herbs in there. I want to add more of your beautiful cream cheese to me. Look at this handbag. It's speaking to you. It's like <laughs> to me. Where are you? Eat me, eat me, eat me, to me. <laughs> I think it's gorgeous, look at that. It is, and it looks divine. I cannot wait to try it. Now that's one refreshing way to end a long day. To get your hands on this recipe, head over to afternoonexpress.co.za to indulge yourself in some handbag bread. Yes. <laughs> Nothing beats the long-lasting freshness and quality taste of Clover Fresh Milk. Made with love by Clover. Ladies, 
It's eating time, yes. one of my favorite times of the day. You. you know, it's just so rewarding after working so hard, South Africa, yes. being able, yes, dish it, girl, <laughs> being able just to just connect with the ladies and find out, you know, the topic of the day. So today yeah. we're debunking some myths and things that a lot of people miscommunicate when it comes to skincare mm. tips and tricks. I don't know, Anelia, if you've come across any. You know what? My mom used to tell me that I must go over the basin with hot water and steam my face with a towel over it. And then I must like then get rid of all the impurities. But I don't know about that. I actually, can I tell you, Anele, 100%, mommy, that is not even a tip or trick. That is false. It is 100% correct. In fact, so much so that right now we've got facials that are purely called steam facials. Really? Yes, girl. So even when you're sick, there's a lot of people, they say, you just put the towel over your head. Yes. You let all that steam come up, whether you're putting something medicinal in there. It just works perfectly. And you, Dumi? I'm hearing you guys talking about the mess. I'm out here with the handbag bread and I'm thinking about all the people who go to weddings and takes kaftin and this handbag <laughs> bread right there is this kaftin, all this kaftin you need to you shove can, all the <laughs> things you get like the samosas and, and all, this, all the sandwiches that the, you want to take home sorted <laughs> Ooh, ladies, that sounds good. It sounds like I'm also going to be taking a whole lot of scaftines here of these delicious bread and, of course, this treat with the couscous. Thank you, ladies. I appreciate your work in the kitchen and, of course, your contribution to the conversation. But join us again tomorrow, Mzanzi, as we focus on raising good men. Until then, good night, stay safe, and happy eating. Afternoon Express, made with love by Clover. Another feel-good production.